Hi, today I am back on my own. Um, for those of you who've been watching the whole series, you'll have enjoyed Will Francis and his very traditional kind of woodblock printing. I now am going to go right off piste because today I want to talk to you about dealing with this block here, which is my um, plank of yew wood. So one of the things I want to talk to you about is getting it lined up for printing, but the other is the fact that I don't actually want to cut this plank because I want to be able to use it again in other prints. So rather than committing to cutting a wood block into it to print, I am going to use Mylar, this plastic film, in order to block off areas that I don't want to print so that the whole log stays intact and I can use it um, in another wood block at a later date. So the product that I'm using here, this is Mylar and it's available in various um, thicknesses. This comes, the one that I'm using here comes from hand printed um, and it's, it's an inexpensive plastic film, but it's really useful because you can use it effectively like a stencil to block off areas. So what I've done here is I've cut myself some strips of this plastic and I have used my master tracing. So if we look at the master tracing. Now, when I was talking about making this master tracing, I mentioned that it was plastic film that I used and not tracing paper. You'll have noticed if you've watched a whole series that this tracing comes out and is used regularly. So it gets a beating. So a plastic film, which is much more stable than tracing paper, is a good idea to use for Japanese wood blocks. So here is my poly draw that I'm using here, my master tracing. And what I've done is I've basically worked out when I did the, the initial drawing where I wanted my waterfall and I've made a like a rough outline shape here. And here's the edge of the print. And I've used that as a, a guide to place my um, sheets here of, of the mylar. And when I ink up, what I'll do is I'll flip them back and I'll link up and then they just flip down before printing and they mask that area so that it doesn't print. I've also created a little tiny mask here for the waterfall. So if I show you a proof print that I've done already of the whole thing. So I think this is the first view you've had of the complete print. So here is a proof print that I did. You can see there's this waterfall area here, very soft and subtle. And I just wanted to mask off that little bit there because in fact, the only bit that I'm going to print of this log is this top area. So no cutting needed. The last thing I wanted to show you about the Mylar before we go on is with a different print. And here I'm working on a new set of artist support pledge prints. And I sometimes use Mylar when I have several little blocks. Here I've got these darker pink and pale pink blocks. If I just show you the print, I'll explain. So I've got the breast of the little bird here and then the shapes on the moon as well. And they're a bit close to each other. So when I ink up this particular print, what I do is I use this little flap of mylar so I can ink up my moon and flap that down and I know those are not going to print. And when I come to print these darker bits, I'll swap that round so that I don't get any darker bits of pink printing on the moon shapes there. So mylar is, is really handy just to block areas off. It will also stop any embossing from those little blocks as well. So it's quite a useful product. So that's how I'm, I've set up the block in terms of simulating cutting without actually doing any damage to the U. And the next thing I have to do is to put it in place. So I'm very lucky in that Ben has built me a jig. Um, so what he's done here is he's got some scrap plywood by the look of it. And he's built me a sort of L shape here and then something, a base on which I can put my, um, my U log. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to position it and then I'm going to stick it in place. And there's a couple of ways of doing it. 
Um, this is carpet tape. So this is a double-sided tape for sticking down things like vinyl flooring and stuff like that. So it's quite a sturdy double-sided tape. The log is very heavy, so it's not going to get, it's not, knock, if I knock it, it won't like move easily. So tape is, is plenty to hold it in place. The other thing you can do if you've got one of these staple guns is staple gun it in place. Um, but it doesn't have to be terribly secure. If you were working with something a little bit more lightweight, then you need to make sure it can't move while you're printing. You can't rely on the weight of it to hold it in place. Now, for those of you who haven't got a Mr. B to make jigs, I printed this proof print and the artist uh, proof prints that are on exhibition at the moment in Birch Tree Gallery in Edinburgh without this jig. And all I did was to set myself up on a bench top and I got the log in position and I used a piece of wood in place instead of a jig and I just clamped the wood to the table and, and position the log and did it sort of free form like that. And um, that worked very well. If you are improvising, you do need to remember that when you come to print, your printing paper is going to be damp. So don't improvise with mount board or cardboard or anything like that that will buckle if it gets wet. You need something that's going to hold everything in place and not mind getting a bit damp. So when it comes to getting everything into place, I'm going to use the master tracing for that. So back to this. So again, very important that it stays accurate. And what I want to do is to work out where to put my kentos. And again, I don't particularly want to cut kentos into this jig because I'll probably use this jig for lots of other things. So this time around, instead of cutting the registration slots, I'm going to use these little stick-on registration slots. And uh, you can get these, again, I know hand-printed sell them. I think in Taglio in London sell them um, and McLean's in America. But you, they're basically stick-on kentos. I've talked about them before and I'm going to use them for this project. So what I need to do next is to position everything and get everything accurate. So now I need to get everything accurately lined up. So what I'm going to do is go to my tracing here and I'm just going to begin. I'm ignoring the jig at this point. I'm just going to look at this area here and get everything lined up nice and accurately. Now, as I showed you, it's only like this part that's important in this print. So this is what I'm focusing on and I'm sort of looking here. This line here, um, I've got another woodblock that's cut along this line. So I need to kind of make sure that this marries up. That's looking pretty good to me. So I'm going to now stick this down with some masking tape to hold it in place. So this is this is real improvisational stuff, which um, traditionally just wouldn't have happened. But it all boils down to basically I'm too mean to cut this piece of wood. Um, it's such a lovely bit of wood and I want to make a temporary adjustment. So that's why I'm working like this rather than mapping out and cutting. OK, so now that's attached and it's not going anywhere. I can just get this into place but you can see the tracing slumping at the moment so I'm just going to use a book um, lovely book about Leonard Baskin who is one of my absolute print heroes so um, thank you Leonard you're the right size for this job so I'm just going to pop him in there and that's just going to hold the tracing in the right place so when I come to print with this particular block what I'll do is I'll hunt out um, a piece of wood that's going to sit in here and hold things at the right height but Leonard's going to do the job for now. Okay so now I can see that I'm, I'm in a pretty good place to mark my registration and I'm going to do that with a pencil. I'm not going to put the stickers on yet I just want to mark that with a pencil. 
because it's easier to put the stickers on without the tracing in the way. So just like marking up the kento for any block, I've just put that in place. So now I've marked the position of the kentos um, on my jig, I'm going to mark the position of the um, U-log on the backing board. So I'm just going to take a softish pencil and draw along the profile of the log and I'll do the same at the front bit here just so we're absolutely sure where everything's going and then I can fold this back I'm going to leave this on here and just fold it out of the way and then we can start putting down the tape and sticking the log into place. So I have stuck the board into place. Be generous with your double-sided tape. Don't be shy about it because you do want it to actually hold. Um, and obviously when we've done this and print's finished, I can peel it all off again. So now I'm just checking my kentos to see how we're doing. And actually those look almost bang on. That one could just do with coming in a fraction. And that's going to hold everything in place. So now all I need to do is to find something to substitute in here that's not going to matter if it gets damp because Leonard can go back on the bookshelf having done his job. And I'm just going to put the corner kento on. And the other thing that I'm, I must say is that the job of this piece of wood, it's very atmospheric, it's very pale in the background, so it's not pinpoint accuracy isn't absolutely required. I'm going to aim for pinpoint accuracy, I always do, but it's, I've got a little bit of wriggle room. So if you are planning to do this, do bear in mind that if you want to do this with a plank where it has to be absolutely accurate, you're going to have to take a lot of care because this is an improvisation. So um, I'm making it slightly easier on myself in the, in the finished print. The job of the U is simply to be this ghostly impression up here. So that's how I've improvised the positioning of this block and I hope you'll join us when we get started with the printing.